I am Filiz Kuşkaya Mumcu. Uh, I'm an educational researcher. Uh, currently works at uh, Johannes Kepler University in Linz in Austria. And uh, I have approximately 25 years experience in educational technology. I have a PhD in computer education and instructional technology. If you look up for the advancement in the educational technology area, uh, these uh, developments in technology uh, have transformed uh, education a lot. Uh, for teacher perspective, for learner perspective, for um, the managers also, for school uh, perspective. We have three perspectives, uh, in my opinion. So for teaching purposes, Somehow it uh, redu reduces uh, the workload of teachers, but at the same time it uh, increases uh, the workload of teachers because um, they didn't expect uh, these um, uh, developments in the technology and they weren't prepared for these advancements. So uh, now they should learn new things and they should prepare their selves to use that technology in the classroom effectively and how to integrate this technology into teaching is an important question and uh, they were not prepared for uh, these developments uh, in their university education you know and uh, now they should learn new things for students' perspectives, and uh, as you know, we, uh, we call it X generation, Y generation, Z generation, Alpha generation, but it means uh, there are a lot of uh, gaps between this generation. And in three years, uh, for each generation, we have new skills, <laughs> new uh, you know, uh, developments, for example, uh, if I consider my daughters, uh, I have three and uh, three of them are totally different. Uh, they were born with different skills, different listening skills and uh, different learning skills or diff different uh, soft skills. And so uh, it's uh, really difficult for teachers to catch up uh, with these new um, things, you know, uh, they should adapt their selves for each new generation. In three years, they are finding a new generation and they should adapt their teaching strategies based on uh, new generation's needs. And uh, with, the ha with the development of technology, for example, now in primary education, we can easily see students are looking for opportunities for visual things you know they are using youtube a lot to learn new things or uh, they are aware of uh, their needs for example oh i should learn math and i have some problem with the multiplication and okay let's see uh, look up uh, search for uh, some videos on youtube so uh, for school managers also monitoring process uh, change a lot for uh, students to monitor their learning and to evaluate this process or uh, for teachers evaluate their teaching skills and monitor how they are doing. So uh, the technology will help, uh, is helping currently, but at the same time reducing and increasing workload in different ways. For traditional methods, it's reducing the workload, but for innovative methods, it's also increasing the workload for teachers, managers, and maybe for learners. How does AI change the approach to education? Uh, it changed in many ways, uh, honestly, uh, because it's a buzzword right now. Be artificial intelligence is a quite new technology for uh, that area for teachers, for students, for school managers. So first we try to understand what's the development, what's uh, bringing us. And uh, because when you are going, 
when you go to a computer scientist, probably uh, he or she will ask you several questions about machine learning, deep learning, and uh, they are aware of the difference between these terms or they are aware of the possibilities that AI brings to them. But for educational purposes, uh, now we are end users. We are end users and we try to benefit uh, artificial intelligence in classroom and efficiently. And we can integrate in the, uh, this technology into teaching and learning process in different ways. And, uh, but uh, there are several research about artificial intelligence in education. Yes, this is efficient way to reduce workload. Uh, for example, uh, designing uh, lesson plans. Uh, we have several studies about it. We, it uh, artificial intelligence help teachers to design efficient lesson plans. That's good. It reduces the workload. But for students, the new studies show us it is... Um, how can I explain it? Uh, there is a cognitive loop for students when they need to learn something. And this is good for them. It's not, uh, it shouldn't be too much, but it shouldn't be too less. And unfortunately, artificial intelligence is doing cognitive offloading for students. What does it mean? It uh, reduces the struggles for students, but at the same time, students need some challenges for learning but artificial intelligence opens the way. You know, we should be very careful about this cognitive loot or cognitive offload perspective, because we should uh, force our students to learn something. They, they need some challenges to learn, to trigger their learning process. So we have good parts and we have not bad parts, I want to underline uh, that sentence because uh, some people uh, wants to spread that word. Oh, we have a bad size of technology. No, if we use technology efficiently, if we know how to integrate it into learning and teaching process effectively, we have always advantages comparing the traditional methods. So, but. Uh, if, as a teacher, I want to integrate AI into my teaching and learning process, I should be very careful how to integrate it. And change in education affect the business, of course, and the business, uh, the change in business also affect the education. Because why we need uh, this school education? First, start with that question. Uh, in that century, the main idea for school education is to <clears throat> promote workforce, you know. Uh, we are trying to train our students uh, to the needs for workforce uh, uh, of the societies. And uh, now, uh, because of that, we are trying to integrate these uh, technologies, new emerging technologies into education. Uh, to train our students in a better way, to uh, prepare them for this new society. So business needs that people. So uh, education systems uh, need to prepare students for these new developments. So uh, there is an interplay between, a strong interplay between uh, business and education right now, and uh, they are affecting each other too much. Uh, much more than we expected uh, last 10 years, you know, for, for the last decade. So uh, now I can say maybe something for K-12 education, but if it comes to high, higher education, I can say easily uh, we are expecting a huge transformation for higher education and we don't need maybe in the uh, next 10 years we don't need any programs like uh, computer science education or business or i don't know uh, sociology but we need 
people. Uh, we need to train students in specific areas and based on their interests, they should uh, uh, reach out the opportunities in university to take some courses. For example, uh, my idea for the next 10 years, we will transform university education into micro-credential uh, learning opportunities and uh, because our learning ways also changed a lot. For example, now the attention time of the students change a lot. They can force students to sit in the classroom for 45-40 minutes and uh, listen a teacher or an instructor or faculty member. Because uh, now if you observe, uh, you can easily observe that a student in higher education right now, they are uh, watching YouTube videos uh, in twice speed. They don't watch uh, these videos in normal speed because their uh, attention time is much more less than our generation. So. Uh, I think and uh, there is an upcoming hybrid uh, approach for university education which combines online education and face-to-face -face education and maybe we will, we will see more uh, opportunities for flipped classroom and uh, we will use a lot of micro learning opportunities in future for higher ed education I think. Self-regulated learning is an approach and honestly, it's a part of 21st century skills like computational thinking, uh, decision-making skills and, uh, and problem-solving skills. And uh, basically, self-regulated learning is important for students uh, to teach them how to monitor their learning process and how to improve their learning process. If you are aware of how you learn and then you can improve it. You should be aware of uh, your learning process and then you can improve it. So the basic idea for self-regulated learning to help students first to be aware of their learning process and then to improve it for better learning situations. Usability testing is an important area, an interdisciplinary area, uh, which means you need educational technologists and at the same time computer scientists. Uh, it's uh, not easy to develop a learning environment or instructional system, but you should also be <coughs> aware of the uh, usability of that platform. So uh, it's a research area for human-computer interaction. And uh, usability testing is helping us to evaluate our solutions, products, and uh, from the perspective of the target group of uh, the users of that platform. So uh, in that at Tech Talents projects, we develop a usability platform and uh, based on uh, self perceptions of the users to help educational technology companies to evaluate their products and improve it. And uh, what we are evaluating we, within that usability testing, we are evaluating the ease of use of that product, the navigation skills, the content, and so on. Uh, I found new AI Campster solution very interesting because they integrate artificial intelligence in a very efficient way uh, due to the learning process of users because they are using an adaptive learning approach and based on that uh, approach they are trying to help users to find uh, first, basically, their needs for what to learn. This is the basic steps. What to learn? 
and then why to learn and how to learn. I think this is a very efficient uh, approach uh, for our new expectation for learning processes.